Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Let's talk about some Starship news. There's some interesting things happening at SpaceX down at Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas, right on the coast of the Gulf of Mexico. There's some road closures coming up, so we have to think about what that could possibly be. So let's do a little bit of speculation here for the next few minutes, shall we? Uh, we have some road closures. You can't see it because it's behind me. But the 8th, 11th, and 12th of December, uh, the closures were revoked from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., basically meaning that the Highway 4, where they transport things at Starbase, is uh, revoked. They, they they're not going to close it down for those days. But we do have some possible closures coming up December 13th, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. December 14th, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., possible closures coming up. So... The important thing to know about this is that SpaceX is really pushing for the Starship to launch again by the end of this year, or at least get the hardware down to the launch pad and get it set up for the Christmas holidays. So everybody at SpaceX goes on a holiday for the Christmas uh, season, you know, for the holiday season. They're away for about a week, so they're really pushing hard to get everything in line so they can start off the new year and possibly launch in the first quarter of next year. Now there's internal documents, mind you, there's internal documents about SpaceX launching from uh, Boca Chica, Starbase, Texas at the end of this year. They want to have it ready by the end of this year, by December 25th, by Christmas. But there's a possibility that, of course, that's not going to happen. The FAA also still has to give them a license to fly. And there's an investigation going on about the last flight. So there's a lot of red tape and paperwork to go through before they actually fly this thing. We're not sure which booster is going to be. We're not sure which ship it's going to be. That's all speculation at this point. But there's a possibility that between December 13th and December 14th, between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. on both of those days, that something could be moving from either the uh, the high bay in the bay area in the production facility area to the launch site so a booster or a ship may be moving down there they may have to do some cryo testing they may have to do some static fires they do have to do some static fires actually before they launch this thing again it's kind of funny if you think about it when uh, a, a normal rocket flies uh, they may do a static fire here and there you know, they might they might test the engines, but they don't usually do a static fire. Sometimes they do, but I've noticed they don't really do a static fire when it's all ready to launch. Right. So they they put it on the uh, on the pad. It's ready. It's up. It's erect. It's ready to go. And they don't do a static fire there. But SpaceX does that sometimes. Interesting. So could we see more static fires from start? That's a little side note for you. This little little thing that you can think about on the side is that maybe maybe they're going to do some static fire soon. And could they be doing a full stack by Christmas? Interestingly, that's kind of a possibility if they push through really, really hard. So that's all we have for now. We don't really know exactly what's going to be going on for the next few days, but it's going to be December 13th and December 14th. Those are the possible closures. So booster or ship possibly move down to the launch pad. They only close this road when something big is happening. So um, the the thing, it, it, it says transportation here. Let me show you this too. So you can, uh, so you can see the actual document. Please be advised that on December 12th, this is for the same days, basically, uh, SpaceX will be conducting transportation operations on Highway 4 near Boca Chica between 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Um, the beach and highway will remain open throughout the operation. However, traffic may be delayed for a short duration. So there's a possibility that SpaceX moves a booster, moves a ship down to the launch facility, and you just kind of move off to the side if you're a vehicle and the, the traffic um, police down there tell you what to go, where to go and how to uh, get out of the way. Basically, these things are huge. They take up the whole road and they pass by pretty quickly. Um, so you might have like a 45 minute delay, uh, but that's pretty impressive. A 45 minute delay is something the size of a 250 foot tall booster or 150 foot tall ship are going down to the launch area. So that's all we know right now from SpaceX. They did release some launch footage with some... Um, with some uh, with some rocket cams, some GoPros that are on the side of the rocket, um, and we'll be discussing that a little bit 
um, in another episode. So another really cool thing uh, about SpaceX is they're doing a Falcon Heavy launch in the near future. Now the Falcon Heavy launch is pretty cool um, and we're going to take a look at that real quick too. They're targeting, uh, it says December 12th at 8.14 p.m. Eastern time for Falcon Heavy's USS F-52. So the USS F-52 flight is for a space plane. They're doing a secret space plane launch. Uh, the space plane isn't actually secret, but what it does while it's in space is a secret mission. So we may not get any footage once the ship is or once the the rocket is uh, in flight more than when the boosters separate and come back down to earth and then they'll probably cut off the broadcast so it'll be a pretty short flight tonight uh 8 14 p.m eastern time it'll be on x uh, on spacex's x account so they're going to go live about 15 minutes before the launch uh, now let's take a look real quick about um the uh the USS F-52 launch. The USS F-52 uh, has been scrubbed. It was scrubbed last night due to some sort of um, ground failure. We're not exactly sure to, what it was. It wasn't weather, but we do have good weather coming up in the next few days um, and we have good weather for the launch. So let's take a look at that too, because weather is important. Um, you know, breezy northerly winds with slowly shift with slowly shift northeasterly overnight and continue into Tuesday. Upper level cloudiness will increase through the day tomorrow with primarily concern shifting to thick cloud layers with liftoff winds as a secondary concern. So thick, thick cloud layers. Um, that's kind of a uh, kind of a thing that they should worry about, mainly due to static electricity. And yeah, it's it's more than likely going to be a no show for those clouds tonight. There could be some thick clouds. They launch through thick, uh, thick clouds all the time, but they have a 20% primary concern uh, for launch day, which means they have an 80% chance of a successful flight of this rocket tonight. Thick cloud layer rule, lift off winds. That's it. So if we have some high winds tonight, this thing isn't going to launch. But other than that, everything looks good for the launch. The hardware looks good. SpaceX actually... Um, you know, they're showing that they're going to launch tonight, 8.14 p.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday, December 12th. And another backup opportunity is available on Wednesday, December 13th, if needed. So uh, if it doesn't launch tonight because of weather, uh, uh, then it's all good. We'll try again tomorrow. That's what's great about rocket flight and space flight is that you can always try again, um, whether it's an instantaneous launch window or a, just another day. You know, you have other days in the flight um, flight path that, not the flight path, but you have other days that you can fly this thing. Sort of like Starship. Uh, we can go back to Starship for a second. And uh, if they don't launch this thing by um, December 25th, which of course the internal memo is basically SpaceX saying, let's push this thing as fast as we can and get this thing flying as fast as we can. Basically, they're going to work people really hard until Christmas. And I thought about this in my last video. They work people really hard. It's called a sprint some places. They, you work really hard for like two or three weeks. And then when you're done with that sprint, you just have a ton of stuff done. You can go on vacation and like chill for a couple of days. Go see your family, do the holiday thing, you know, uh, get in a fight with your uncle or whatever about politics, whatever you're going to do. But when you come back, there's already a ton of stuff done. So SpaceX is still waiting on the FAA, of course, because they're always waiting on the FAA, but there's a possibility that they do have so much stuff done before the break that when they come back, um, they'll be ready to static fire and pressure test. Uh, they might even get a stack. Maybe they'll stack it up before um, Christmas. And that would be a huge deal because uh, it's a fit test every single time they do this. They do a fit test. They make sure everything works well, get all the plumbing together right, and then ground systems working, uh, make sure all the people are there. The people are part of the ground systems. And then they have to test everything, make sure it works, and then just wait around for the FAA. I, that's, I think that's what's going to happen again. I don't think they're going to see any sort of uh, delays with the ground systems. Um, QD arm is... You know, it's still in the process. The whole the whole um, flight deck and the uh, the pad are fine. Everything looks in good shape. So, I think they have a real shot of getting this off. Probably not not by the end of this year. 
but by early next year. So uh, probably first quarter of next year, whether it's January or February. So please let me know in the comments down below what you think about that. Like, do you think they're going to launch early next year? Do you think they're going to launch January or February? Because I don't know if they're going to make it by the end of this year. It would be great if they could launch by the end of this year, uh, but I'm not 100% sure if they can. So yeah, just let me know in the comments below because it should be an interesting, uh, interesting launch here. So I want to show you one more thing before we go to, I've been building this out, um, on the side spacenewspod.com. If you want to check it out, we have some interesting information here about the Polaris program too. Uh, there's some EVA stuff happening, uh, with the Polaris Dawn program. It's been postponed until at least April, 2024, according to Jared Isaacman and Jared had said, you know, like, Hey, we want to get this done by, you know, it was just, it's initially planned for like 2022 and they wanted to get it done by the end of this year. They want to launch this thing by the end of this year. And the Polaris Dawn program is very important for future spaceflight because it's going to be the first EVA by a commercial space flight or uh, during a commercial space flight, I should say like a private space flight. So Jared, uh, billionaire, you know, spent a bunch of money to hire SpaceX, basically to take him and his team into space and then do these experiments where he's going to be doing an EVA and in, in extravehicular activity, basically going outside of the ship while it's in space, while it's orbiting earth, which is incredibly cool. Um, so that's possibly going to happen in April of 2023 and there's or 2024, but there's so many technical things that need to work perfectly for everybody to basically survive this mission. Um, they have to pressurize the cabin, um, which is a normal thing for a SpaceX flight for a, a Falcon nine and a crew dragon flight, pressurize it and then depressurize it when Jared or whoever's going to be doing the spacewalk is outside you know they have to they have to make sure that all those things work or people are in danger so um they have to make sure everything is perfect plus the eva suit is pretty important and the funny thing is i want to show you a, an interesting tidbit here uh the first eva was from alexei uh leonov a soviet and russian cosmonaut first eva in uh 1965 March 1965, and it took us this long to get back to or to get to a commercial EVA or a private EVA. So it took so many years for us just to get to this point. So we spent 12 minutes and nine seconds outside the capsule. And a fun fact about that is that there was some time added on to his time outside of the capsule because his suit inflated and it expanded. And he couldn't fit through the door to get back inside. So what he had to do, there was a release valve. So he had to release some of the oxygen and some, you know, some of the pressure in there. He did the release valve. And, you know, a few seconds later, after probably going like, uh oh, this is not a good idea. Um, probably just went, you know, just, just like released the valve and then went right back into the right back into the ship. And uh, he was fine. But like, that's terrifying. So the EVA suits, very important. Like that'll save your life if you have a good EVA suit. So they're working on those things and there's possibly, you know, there's, there's a lot of work to be done on, on this mission, but, um, you can check out more information about it at spacenewspod.com. Uh, it's, it's part of our growing media empire here at the show. So, uh, help support us out, go over there. Uh, we don't have ads on the site right now. So, um, you know, you're not going to get bombarded by a bunch of ads and stuff. We do have a mailing list, um, an email list, which is, um, right here in the middle of this article, but also on the sidebar. So, um, check that out too. sign up for that. It helps out just a little bit. Um, also, if you want to give this video a thumbs up, give it a subscribe to the channel. If you've watched this long and also super, uh, super likes super stickers, super chats, things like that, whatever. Um, all those super things from YouTube help me continue to do this and help me continue to keep this channel going and build this media empire, my media empire, I'm such a megalomaniac and building this thing out because of your support. I could not do this without you. So thank you so much for tuning in today and being part of the flight crew, hit the subscribe button with maximum dynamic pressure, and I will see you in the next one. Okay, I got a goodbye. There we go.
All right, thank you so much. Join the flight crew, hit the subscribe button. And also there's a video over there you should check out um, over that way somewhere. It'll be a video that you'll really like, I promise. And if you like it, give that video a thumbs up. Let's push it up to the algorithm. It'll be fun. All right, let's do this together. All right, bye everybody.